a few years back even I did not have much idea about uh, a joint PhD program. For students who are looking forward to join a PhD program, it is extremely important that you are aware of what the research uh, is going on in that particular uh, field. So uh, in my in my PhD, uh, the work that I do in IIT Bombay is mostly an experimental work and the work that I do at Monash University uh, involves a lot of uh, simulations and calculations. Welcome viewers to one more session of uh, Kirtik Vasan Talks. Today we have Abin joining us from Melbourne and he is currently pursuing his joint PhD from IIT Bombay and Monash University. So uh, welcome Abin on our show. Thank you. Yeah, hi Kirtik. So, how are you, Avin? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, currently, it's quite uh, cold here, it's winter here. So, yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm also doing great. So, Avin, take us through your uh, journey, like where have you grown up and uh, what are you uh, currently doing? Okay, yeah. Uh, so, I am from Kerala, uh, from this place called Kotayam, uh, but I grew up in West Bengal. Uh, my parents were employed there, so uh, I did uh, a major part of my schooling in West Bengal and after that I uh, went back to Kerala and pursued my master's in physics from this institute called ISER. Uh, you might have heard of it. It is Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. Uh, I did it from ISER Trivandrum and it was an integrated uh, program. That means I did my uh, bachelor's and master's in an integrated course. Uh, so after that, I joined the PhD program at the IIT Bombay Monash uh, Research Academy, which is a joint PhD program, as you had mentioned. The term joint PhD has been always like wrongly inter interpreted. So please shed some light over this. What is joint PhD all about? Yeah, okay. It is a, a very interesting question because a few years back, even I did not have much idea about a, a joint PhD program. So what essentially is a joint PhD program is that it um, involves two uh, universities. In this case, uh, in my program, uh, it is IIT Bombay and Monash University Australia. So these two universities, uh, they have a collaboration and uh, they have this program in which uh, they award joint PhD degrees. Essentially, it means that uh, the student is, uh, the, P the student who's enrolled in the program gets enrolled in both the universities simultaneously. That is, he is a student of IIT Bombay as well as Monash University right when he starts the PhD program. And uh, as part of the joint PhD program, the student is supposed to carry out research work in both the institutes. So I do some part of my research work at IIT Bombay and some part of my research work at Monash University. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, the PhD degree that the that is awarded uh, is approved by both the universities. So that's why it's a joint PhD program and it is very different to a uh, MS PhD program or a PhD program in which students go from one university to the other for some internship or some collaboration based research. Okay, Abin. So, uh, what is the uh, procedure for applying for such programs? Is it like the similar uh, process where an applicant goes for like taking masters or uh, PhD programs after giving the gate examination? Is the channel same or there is a slight uh, a difference to uh, get into this program? Okay, uh, there is a difference to get into this program uh, because of the fact that these programs are highly customized. So, uh, for example, in my program, which is the IIT Bombay Monash uh, Joint PhD program, there is a, an institute called the IIT Bombay Monash Research Academy, which handles all the uh, uh, all the examination and candidature related uh, uh, work. So, what happens is that there is a different portal to apply for this particular Joint PhD program, and the exams uh, are different. The interview is different, uh, and the important thing is that uh, there are so what what has happened uh, sorry i'll just do it again so this part i'll do it again uh, so what iit bombay and monash has uh, collaborated on is uh, some topics like um, clean energy water and renewable resources 
so what happens is uh, based on these topics uh, professors from both the universities that is iit bombay and monash universities uh, they join together and they discuss and decide a project uh, so this project is already decided by the two supervisors it could be more supervisors and it could also be uh, sponsored by an industry for example tata uh, or such other industries so these projects which are predefined are floated out by the iit bombay monash research academy and the students who think they are eligible to apply uh, they can apply for this uh, uh, iit bombay monash PhD program. So uh, I had applied for one such uh, project and uh, so the IIT Bombay Monash Academy shortlists the students based on several criteria which about which I'll talk now and uh, then you're called for an interview and a written examination and based on the overall performance uh, you are selected for the program. So this is different from the conventional PhD program in IIT Bombay and the PhD intake program at Monash University. So as you had asked, the criteria for uh, the admission is not just the gate or uh, any other qualifying examination. It depends on a lot of, uh, lot of uh, points. For example, um, if, the candidate, if the candidate has some experience in the project that is uh, being floated, then it is considered an advantage. Also, GATE and exams like uh, TOEFL or GRE should also uh, come, into hand, come into an advantage when applying for this program. Okay, so when you apply for a PhD program, uh, do you register as a joint PhD program be beforehand or is it uh, only, uh, you get to know only after you pass the comprehensive exam? Okay, uh, so uh, uh, in this case what happens is uh, after uh, the offer letter is given out by the IIT Bombay Monash Research Academy uh, and the student accepts the offer and joins the IIT Bombay Research Academy, he becomes a joint PhD student. So even before any comprehensive examination or a qualified examination is uh, passed, the student can enroll as a joint PhD student. Then depending on the department uh, criteria uh, of each institute, for example, I am in the electrical engineering department of IIT Bombay and the electrical engineering department has a criteria of a departmental qualifier examination, uh, which is like the comprehensive examination. So that is very specific to the department and uh, the student becomes a joint PhD, uh, uh, joint PhD uh, candidate right when he joins uh, IIT Bombay initially at the beginning of the of the program well uh, great abin uh, that makes us clear about what what is joint phd all about now coming on to your research work what is that you are currently working on okay uh, yeah thanks for asking that so uh, what i'm working on is uh, on these uh, materials which are called two dimensional materials i'm sure all of uh, us must have heard about this material called graphene so not only graphene, there are a lot of other uh, two-dimensional materials which hold these unique electronic and optoelectronic properties and they can be used for uh, sensors like photo detectors and photovoltaic devices and even gas sensors. So my PhD involves uh, uh, fabricating uh, nanoscale devices based on these materials and studying their uh, optoelectronic performance, specifically towards making uh, photovoltaic devices and uh, photo detectors uh, in the nanoscale uh, size. Uh, also, I am uh, doing the theoretical analysis of uh, these devices using uh, computational tools like density functional theory. And uh, I'm trying to see what materials can be employed for uh, such uh, sensor-based applications. Okay, what are the few simulation tools that you uh, make use of? Okay, so, uh, uh, generally, I make use of uh, this uh, methodology called density functional theory, uh, which is a very advanced uh, quantum mechanical uh, theory uh, tool, uh, which is used to uh, carry out atomic scale simulations of different materials. Based on these materials, different proper based on these simulations, 
the properties of the material can be predicted. So uh, the software package that I use is called WASP, uh, which stands for uh, Vienna Ab Initio Simulation Package, which was developed uh, by uh, a university in Austria. Okay. So uh, as you had mentioned that uh, you are working on both the experimental side of your research and uh, also have a, a bit of simulation kind of uh, work involved. So how do you create a coherence between the experimental and simulation kind of uh, research aspect? So uh, in, my, in my PhD, uh, the work that I do in IIT Bombay is mostly an experimental work and the work that I do at Monash University uh, involves a lot of uh, simulations and calculations. So uh, this is well managed because uh, my PhD supervisor at IIT Bombay is an experimentalist and my PhD supervisor at Monash University is a person who works on computational physics. So because uh, I am working in two research groups that focus on one focuses on the experimental part and the other focuses on the computational part, it becomes easier for me to adapt to the working conditions in both the universities. Okay, so you have been in uh, Melbourne for how long, uh, Abin? So uh, I have been in Melbourne for uh, about a year now. Uh, prior to that, I was at IIT Bombay for uh, two and a half years. So how was your lifestyle at Melbourne? So uh, here at Melbourne, uh, I have almost a similar uh, uh, lifestyle as any other student at Monash University. So, um, uh, so I am living in a shared accommodation, which is outside the university. So basically, I have to. Uh, uh, so basically, I work in the university from uh, morning till evening, and then I do all my cooking and. Uh, such things later in the later during the day okay so with the pandemic uh, going on and uh, like everyone is switching to work from home mode so tell us like how is the research uh, work being done right now okay so my condition is different from uh, typical phd students who have a lot of lab based work uh, because as i said in monash university i'm working on computational uh, methods so a lot of my work can easily be transitioned to the work from home style because I run my uh, uh, calculations on the Australian supercomputing facility uh, for which I have remote access. So basically it was easy for me to transition my work from, the, uh, from my office space at Monash to my home. But for people who uh, extensively rely on uh, the lab based work, which uh, uh, which has been uh, it has been really uh, affected it has been really affected uh, because of the COVID-19 situation okay so Abin uh, since you have explained us about the joint PhD program it seems that it needs a long vision in order to already get into this program because you need to already know what work has been done uh, in other universities and do we have a collaboration uh, and similar kind of research uh, interest in both the universities. So you need to be well prepared uh, in advance in order to uh, like fit in correctly in that uh, position. So what is your advice for uh, all the uh, future researchers who wish to uh, pursue a, a program like this? For students who are looking forward to join a PhD program, it is extremely important that you are aware of what the research uh, is going on in that particular uh, field uh, in which you are interested. So looking at uh, uh, some uh, magazines like Physics Today or the annual Science Magazine or the Nature Magazine can give you a glimpse of what uh, the current research is uh, in the in the fields in the different fields. And also right now. Um, a lot of research that goes about is interdisciplinary in nature. So it's always a good idea to talk to people from different fields and get an idea of what research is being carried about. It's also a good idea to talk to your professors, to talk to uh, PhD students or higher degree graduate students in, in your study circle or your friends group to have an idea of what um, research is going on and how you can fit in. It's also important to identify what your strong subjects are. For example, physics is a vast subject and it has uh, all sorts of uh, branches like statistical mechanics or classical mechanics or uh, quantum physics or 
relativity and uh, relativity and astrophysics and such things but it's also it's very important to understand where you what you are good at and what particular subjects you can choose and go ahead in your phd great abin so abin tell us like where uh, our viewers could connect with you and uh, in case they have any questions they could like uh, ask you sure uh, so i will share my email uh, id with you so if uh, your viewers have any questions about the joint phd program or uh, in general about uh, the research that i am doing right now on 2d material based opto electronics or in general about uh, phd programs and such things they can always contact me on the email id which i'll share with you thank you that was a great session talking with you and uh, i would personally thank you to take out a few time of yours and uh, spending with us thank you kirti thank you for the uh, Uh, inviting me for this session it was really wonderful to talk to you and uh, it's always good to uh, know if students are interested in upcoming phd programs like these and also to guide them in whatever way that's possible thank you